Hello, I'm Pastor Horace Dowdy in Lexington, Virginia, coming to you by way of YouTube and bringing every Thursday I bring a local history lesson. And if you like these programs, then uh, click on like and then click on subscribe and then click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified. And I encourage you to bring in your friends and family, tell them about this series. Today, the title of the history lesson is The Lady Magdalena. I want to bring some recognition to the most underappreciated heroine of Lexington and Rockbridge County, the matriarch of Borden's Grant. Her name is Magdalena. Born in Ulster, Ireland in 1715, she was the daughter of Michael and Mary Woods, and in 1737, she came to America with her husband, John McDowell, and little son, Samuel. They were not poor peasants. John was a land surveyor. Accompanied by several other members of the McDowell family, they made their way from Philadelphia into Virginia's Wild Valley. One evening, as they camped near what is now Rafine, only a few miles from where I'm sitting, a stranger approached. He introduced himself as Benjamin Borden, and he said, I own 100,000 acres of this new land, but I'm not sure where it is. I need a surveyor. John McDowell and Benjamin Borden quickly worked out a deal that was a bargain for both. The skillful surveyor managed to locate the boundaries for Borden, who in return deeded 1% of the tract to McDowell. John and Magdalena chose their 1,000 acres between present-day Fairfield and Timber Ridge. They built a log house and stained red. Magdalena gave birth to two more children, James and Sarah. After planting and harvesting crops of corn and hemp, the couple sent word to other relatives urging them to come to this frontier where the land was cheap and fruitful. Many came from the old country, and also from the coasts of America. Magdalena's brother, Richard, settled at the western edge of present-day Lexington. Woods Creek is named after him. Woods Creek runs through Lexington, and it's named for him. Magdalena's sister, Sarah, married Joseph Lapsley and settled on Whistle Creek a few miles to the west of Lexington. Richard Woods and Joseph Lapsley both left distinguished legacies in this area. So did Magdalena's other sister, Martha, who married Peter Wallace. Their line produced Bigfoot Wallace, a mountain man who made history in Texas and whose fame is announced on the historic bronze plaque at the corner of Main and Houston streets in Lexington, Virginia. In December 1742, Woods and Lapsley were part of John McDowell's militia that was called in, into service to escort a troublesome party of Indians away from the nervous settlers. The operation turned tragic at the junction of the James and Maury River, near what we now call Glasgow. A battle suddenly erupted, and young Captain McDowell, riding at the head of the party, was instantly shot and killed. Lapsley and Woods brought his body back to Magdalena, who washed away the blood and buried him beside their home. The spot to this day is called the McDowell Graveyard, and the McDowell family have added their deceased to it ever since. Benjamin Borden, Jr., courted the widow. His father had died, leaving him as the new owner of the Borden Grant, and Magdalena is described in old documents as a ravishing beauty. Her sister-in-law, Mary McDowell Greenlee, states in official court records, that Magdalena, mounted upon a white stallion, would be dressed in a green velvet riding habit that fell to the ground, and her hat was adorned with 12 ostrich feathers. Young Benjamin Borden finally won the hand of the lovely widow, who at first spurned his advances. They were married in 1744 at the old Timber Grove meeting house 
the forerunner of Timber Ridge Presbyterian Church. Ben and Magdalena produced two daughters, Martha and Hannah. They continued to live at the Red House until 1753. Sadly, during that year, both Benjamin and little Hannah died of smallpox. Our remarkable heroine kept the home place. She now owned and managed an enormous estate. She ran the huge farm. She cared for her children. She made contacts with the stream of settlers purchasing land from Borden's Grant. Rich, beautiful. Magdalena was nevertheless lonely and she needed help. She caught the eye of John Bowyer, a strapping educator recently arrived in the area. They were married soon after that first meeting. Was it a marriage made in heaven? Well, I don't know, maybe. It certainly endured, lasting for the remainder of Magdalena's long life. Magdalena's new husband gave up teaching. Amazingly, John Bowyer proved to be a genius at managing wealth. First, Magdalena's then theirs, and finally his own. Boyer wanted to put some distance between him and the McDowell graveyard, and since Magdalena owned most of Rockbridge County, they had hundreds of hilltops on which to build, but instead, with her money and her blessing, they purchased a large tract of land at the edge of Lexington, near Liberty Hall. Being Presbyterian, they knew the owner. He was the Reverend Alexander Craighead, one of the first pastors in the valley. Craig had named the place Mizpah, which in Hebrew means Watchtower Hill. And there on that scenic crest, John and Magdalena built their brick house that stands today. Beautiful, magnificent. Magdalena died in 1796. She probably lies in the sacred grove of perfumed lilacs, as someone described the family graveyard on Thorn Hill, but nobody can be sure. There is no marker, no records, no documents on her burial. Magdalene's 81 years were extraordinary. She was one of the first pioneer women in the valley, without question, the most attractive. Her third husband rose to the rank of general in the Revolutionary War. He was the first presiding judge in Rockbridge. John Bowyer served in virtually every branch of government he was a strong supporter of the college in Lexington. Patrick Henry and Thomas Jefferson were Bowyer's close friends. Marvelous Magdalena took part in the birth of our nation. She helped tame a faithful wilderness. She named Lexington, and she and John named the county, Rock Bridge County, for natural bridge nearby. This woman was a survivor. Her children honored her, and many of them became famous. One grandson became governor of Virginia. Governor McDowell's daughter, Sally, married a pastor, John Miller, and together they occupied the mansion in Lexington named Call Alto, which is still there. Another grandson achieved worldwide fame as the father of abdominal medicine. We do well to remember such a gallant lady. That's why my wife and I, when we built our new home on Thornhill, did not call it Mizpah or Thornhill, we called it Magdalene.